below, controlled by Zigbee. Okay? The door locks in your house, starting your dryer, your air conditioner, your washing machine, those kinds of things are turning to Zigbee as the protocol of choice. As an attacker, that's hugely interesting for me, right? I love that because if I own that protocol, then I can control all these things that happen in the real world that have real impact to people's lives. Right? That, that's very interesting. Uh, I was talking to some folks and, and they said, you know, it's like real world impact from a keyboard, right? It's not even second life, it's first life. It's awesome. Okay? On top of that, you know, I, I like to tell my students at SANS and people, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really very smart. I'm, I'm not. If you saw my college transcripts, you would say, yes, you're not that smart. But what I decided was that I was going to learn from the mistakes of the past. And then I read up and, you know, I've been paying attention for the last 10 or 15 years on security issues. And guess what? A lot of those issues are repeated again with new modern technology and Zigbee's no exception. So let's look at some Zigbee examples. Number one, uh, smart thermostats. Utility companies are going to now uh, be deploying more and more smart grid related technology where you have a, therm uh, a, a meter on the side of your house and the meter gets real time updates from the utility on how expensive electricity is. As a consumer, you can decide, I'm gonna cool my house to 70 degrees because electricity is very cheap right now. Or I'm going to let it warm up to 76 degrees because electricity is very expensive right now. And you can make those real-time decisions. How do you make those decisions? Through smart thermostats. Your thermostat gets signal information from the meter over Zigbee to tell you what the price of electricity is. Not only that, to receive message updates from the utility and to do things like enter a credit card to pay your bill functions over Zigbee, okay? July payment received, thank you, is what the utility is telling me here in this particular smart meter. That's coming to a home near you very soon. We're already seeing it in California massively deployed. We're seeing it in many other places throughout the United States as well, and we're gonna see it more and more going forward. Zigbee is what we call the home area network there, where it connects your utility meter to your thermostat and then to appliances inside your house. Right. Um, Siemens makes an interesting product called the Siemens Apogee Floor Level Network Controller, or FLC. Okay. The Siemens FLC product allows me to take these Zigbee nodes here, okay, these kind of Zigbee devices, and then interface them with whatever peripherals I want. Generation, airflow, heating systems, cooling systems, whatever it is. And then I control those things over Zigbee. Okay. Um, the Siemens had a, a nice press blurb here. They said, uh, with wireless, your building will be more marketable. Woohoo! Yeah! Oh, sorry. And uh, you'll be better prepared to capitalize on future technologies. Wow. Now, um, Jay Hendricks, who is the Siemens manager for wireless solutions, he, I, I don't know him. He seems like a nice guy, you know. I mean, he's marketing. But besides that, right, I won't hold it against him. He says, uh, simply put, the network can't be compromised because the signal is automatically able to circumvent obstructions and find its target. Wow, really? Is that, is that the thing that we're worried about here? The signal finding its way to the target through obstructions, okay? I mean, it, maybe it's a vocabulary issue or maybe they just don't have any idea of the type of concerns that we have with these types of systems. Quickset is now making Zigbee controlled locks to put on your home. I forever lose my keys, constantly. I'm always losing my keys, I'm always locking myself out, happens constantly, okay? They make a unit now where it's a little touchpad on the door and then you enter a combination to unlock the door for you. The key, uh, the uh, lock system here talks over Zigbee to a box in your house and then that box decides whether or not that code should let somebody in. You can provision it so that if you've got a repair guy coming over to fix your boiler or something, then you can give him a one-time code, let him in, and then after the door closes, nobody else can use it again. Okay? All over Zigbee. Wow, 
This type of system is going to be used in the future. We're already seeing some prototypes where now your Zigbee smoke alarms and CO detectors talk to the door locks to unlock your house in the event of a fire so that the fire department doesn't have to bust down the door to get their way in. Okay? That, that's a good use of technology. I'm all for not fixing the door jam on my house when there's a fire. Okay? But can I manipulate that? Okay? Besides just, you know, piping smoke into the house, right? I mean, you know, are there ways we can manipulate these systems? Oh, this is my favorite. The MGM City Center in Las Vegas. New high-class resort, kind of a luxury thing going on. They, they got all this stuff going on. They are deploying Zigbee everywhere in this facility. You unlock your guest room with a Zigbee card, okay? They want to make it personalized for you. So when you walk into the room, the room remembers what TV channels you like, what radio station you like, what temperature you prefer, how you want your drapes opened because they're motorized. They have toilet seat warmers that remember what temperature you like the toilet seat warm to. I shit you not, okay? Seriously, all controlled over Zigbee so that when I leave and come back, oh, welcome back, Mr. Wright. We've personalized your room just the way you like it, okay? It's the largest Zigbee deployment to date. 10,000 Zigbee touchscreens, uh, 10,000 Zigbee thermostats, 5,000 Zigbee touchscreens, 7,500 peripheral Zigbee controllers throughout the facility. I can't wait to stay there. I'm super excited about it, personally, okay? You know, we see Zigbee used more and more in more and more places now. We talked about blood pressure monitors over Zigbee, oximeters over Zigbee, retail systems managing assets, inventory control, checkout systems over Zigbee. Okay? We're seeing this more and more. It's a very attractive protocol to take little embedded one purpose devices and to network and connect them all together. Okay? And they're going to be, so we're going to see so much more of this in the coming years, in the coming months. All right. So knowing all of that, well, I wanted to start doing some research on this. And, and I said, you know, I want to start checking it out. I want to start attacking Zigbee networks and seeing what the vulnerabilities are. How can we exploit them? So when I started looking around for tools, I found out, well, there was, there was nothing. There, there were no tools. The closest thing I could get to a Zigbee sniffer was $8,500 just to start getting working with Zigbee technology. Okay? Well, that, that won't do, right? We need something better than that. So I took it upon myself to develop a framework called Killer B. Okay? Killer B is a framework that allows us to exploit and explore Zigbee and the underlying 802.15.4 network protocol. It simplifies sniffing packet injection and manipulating these Zigbee networks with a simple API to be able to write your own tools. It's all Python, pure Python, so it integrates well with other Python tools and it's very easy to get developing with this framework very, very quickly. I've decided that I'm going to license all my software from now on with a BSD license instead of the GPL. GPL, it just has too much drama and it's like a virus and, and all these things. So it's free, it's open source. If you want to use it in your commercial products and sell it, you're more than, more than welcome to. That's perfectly okay. And then we can get it for free for our own projects as well. The hardware that I'm using currently is the uh, AVR RZ Raven stick. Okay? So this is a little USB stick with a AT90 USB microcontroller and an 802.15.4 radio interface and a little integrated antenna that's right at the top here. This little stick is about $40. Okay? Now, uh, it's reasonable hardware. You can use GCC for development on it. I don't have to spend $10,000 for a professional development studio like is required for a lot of the TI hardware. So this is a very attractive, low-cost hardware stick for development, and this is what I've been using now. I am working on adding support for other hardware. Mike and I were just talking about that a couple minutes ago, so you'll see more about that from me in the future, too. The downside of the RZ USB uh, stick is that it requires special firmware to be able to do packet injection, to be able to manipulate these Zigbee networks. I wrote that special firmware and I include it with Killer B, but you need a $300 programmer to be able to flash it or some 
very sophisticated soldering skills that I don't possess. Okay? So this is a small enough room. What I've been offering people is if you want to get started with Killer B, buy one or two sticks, 